board with Andrew um, Sheraton here in his BMW 325i. So away we go, it's quite a poor stop from David Howard in the Jaguar. He's falling down the field as we head down to Richard for the first time. You say we had a rainstorm earlier on this afternoon. There's a lot of spray out there for the drivers to contend with. On these, especially when all the cars are closely bunched as they will be on this first lap. Go down towards the Montreal hairpin, up on the inside of David Howard. We attempt, we can't do that. It's Mark Finney there in the box of Lastra trying to come around the outside. I don't know if to do that, but down the Bentley stretch. They're on a big lead for Laurie Dunster. He's got away from Paul Bellamy. They're sitting there in a second position. They break now into Blundell. The old S's, they will go around. And it's the Rover in third of Tim Scott Andrews. Um, Tim Scott Andrews there in that Rover tear sitting in third. Then behind him, we have the car of Mark Fowler, it is. But there is that Vitesse and the ex Tim Harvey liveried. Uh, machine um, leader Lloyd Dunster through uh, Brundle had a seven second lead as he crossed the line. Now, look at this Bellamy getting away now from Mark Fowler. This cute car, we have for second, it's incredible. Um, Andrew Budsby started to lose places just then into Brundle. He lost a place to Richard Miller, who's gone off the circuit. This Ford Sierra all over the grass. He recovers. Will he lose a position? No, he doesn't gain advantage or lose an advantage. So I think. We just leave it as that. The Golf liveried car there went off the circuit, but back on again, and he's now continuing. But um, like I was saying, Andrew Busby's lost a position as well to Chris Bright, last year's champion, coming up through the pack. Getting used to this new, much more powerful BMW E36 M3. There's that Ford Fiesta. Having to use the corner speed. He's in class E, the lowest powered car we have here today, Simon Sheridan, in that Ford Fiesta XR2. So little, this could well be the last lap of the race then. Second, now with a decent advantage, it's Chris Bright. And then it's an even bigger gap from Richard Miller to now Tim Scott Andrews because Mark Fowler's dropped almost to the back of this battle. He's down to eighth. Now Andrew Busby still trying to challenge Paul Bellamy. Now Paul Bellamy's lost a position, hasn't he, to Tim Scott Andrews. So Tim Scott Andrews gained two positions on that lap. Obviously one from Mark Fowler would have fallen off the circuit and the other one to get himself ahead of Paul Bellamy there. Andrew Busby still runs in seat. Malcolm Wise has had a good second half this race. He has made his way up to seventh. And now out of Murray's comes this battle for 13th position for the final time. Lloyd Dunst has already took the checkered flag. And in a moment, Andrew Sheraton's going to take the checkered flag to be second in Class D. The lights go out. We go races a poor start initially from Laurie Dunster, but then as he goes up through the gears, he drops back alongside Roger Stafford, the two BMW M3s, the older shaped car of Roger Stafford on the inside, the newer shaped car of Laurie Dunster, and look at that, good move there for Richard Miller in the 40 Sierra Cosworth to go third, Stafford's dropped down now behind D behind Dunster, the pole car, and now here comes Miller, so he started fourth, um, Yes, but he can't big lock up there from Stamford and he runs up wide stones Dunster and this way will give the Ford Sierra a course worth of Richard Miller. Possibly the race lead as they head down the way to straight. No, Dunster's got that. Dropping down the order now. Down to fifth. He was up in third earlier on. The leaders and into Brooklyn. And it's the first time we've seen Dunster have more than a car left and a car behind. But Miller and Stafford, as you know, I back loose the two again. And look at Stafford really trying to find a way through. Half distance gone. Lapery coming up now. Mark Finney and his Voxel Astra is the first person to be lapped. And uh, just like you know, the Rover Tomcat of Steve Rolls has retired from the race. So we've still got 18 cars running. We can ride on board of Finney, then it's diving up on his side, goes Laurie Dunster. And you can see he's just trying to end the way again, and then Owen, uh, Miller, I should even say, and Stanford, we've got a smoky BMW there of Amanda Edwards. Down toward Brooklyn, the cars make their way then. 17 cars still running, which is good to see. Laurie Dunster here, number 65, will take the win of the third round. Well, the SVG Motorsport Pre 93 Touring Car Championship. Second will go to Richard Miller and third to Jim McLaughlin. But look at this! Sheraton drives on the back of Smooter now as they head up towards Woodco. This is the battle for 13th overall in the Class D victory. And it looks like Daniel Sheaton will take the victory in the class. He certainly does.
slides the car from ball position. That's allowed Laurie Dunstead to go into the lead. And the newer shape, E36, he straight away cuts off Jack Stamford to make sure that Dunstead leads into Paddock for the first time. A good start from the Ford Sierra Cosworth of Richard Miller. He started sixth. He's much further up than that. They say head up the hill for the first time. Right behind him is Paul Bellamy. They say we ride on board with him. He has to dive up on the inside of Chris Bright. Does... Um, the, the Sierra, but he can't get through. Down the hill they come then. Louis Dunster is our race leader. Second there, Stamford. Third is Innes, who races normally in the Project 8 racing saloon. So he's used to, uh, he raced up here. I saw him in March. Um, racing relatively well up inside the top 10. Anyway, 3.30, Jack Stamford all over the back of the race leader. Laurie Dunster then. Anyway, out of Graham Hibbert, the two cars, nose to tail. Can Jack Stamford find a way through? He looks up on the inside, but no, Nigel Innes has that one covered. Both cars go in very deep. Innes even deeper. Jack Stamford managed to cut back. He's on the outside from McLaren. Then he'll have the outside for clearways. And Innes trying to fight back, but then the grip comes to Jack Stamford. And then he flies past Nigel Innes. So into the race lead goes Jack Stamford. Meanwhile, his dad, Roger Stafford, has got ahead of Malcolm Wise. Laurie Dutcher getting away from Richard Miller, who, in fact, was getting away from them. On board replay with Paul Bellamy, where he sees Richard Miller knocking Chris Bright around. Chris Bright has retired from the race now. And Stafford makes his way then into Clearway as he's got the Fiesta to lap down the Bravel Strait. That's of Simon Sheridan, who's going to win class E. Well, he's the only one taking part, but it has been a strong performance from the Fiesta driver. Jack Stamford, he made contact with Laurie Dunster early on, which in the end, lose, lost him to the lead to Nigeria. He had a problem with the car, he had to fight past that to take the race victory then. Jack Stamford wins the race then, a big 15 second gap to Nigel Innes, who will take second and he will win Class B, although not been the fastest person in that class. Underway now, and it's a good start from Andrew Busby there and from Paul Bellamy. Both there on the fifth row getting a good start, but then they couldn't find a way past the two cars on the row in front, that being Chris Bright and Malcolm Wise. So Bellamy slots into ninth as so they head down to the complex for the first time of the 15 minute race as we've got a double header here. Let's be getting the frogs around the outside there comes the, I think it's the Rover Tomcat, isn't it? of Simon Lelou. He makes his way past Bellamy then. So that was, must have been an impressive start from Lelou because he started back on the seventh row of the grid. So that was really quite some start from him in the Tomcat. So down towards Church Corner we go then. And away Wayman using the power of that Camaro to get closer to the two BMWs. He gets there, he sideways, he head through Church Corner, he just about holds onto the car just about holds on to the circuit as well but now that's going to allow him to have a go at Ibrahim up the hill and he should have the position as they go on to the brakes for the chicane to complete lap two and Michael Sheraton there he lays on the brakes so is Ibrahim the Chevrolet Camaro much bigger machine to try and stop at the end of the straight so the two BMWs and Michael Sheraton makes a mistake on the back end on the exit of the chicane now that's allowing Ibrahim up on the inside as they head down towards Allard this is the battle for Class D, remember, and through goes Ibrahim. We have a new leader then in Class D as they head down towards the complex. What can Michael Sheraton do then in the E30? Both these cars E30s, then perhaps a bit too far out for the second part of the corner, but still carries the speed through. As we go to the third and final part of the complex, Richard Ibrahim then leads the way, runs out the wide, he hits the grass, he spins the car away, and he goes to the inside of the circuit, ends up in the field, and he's going to lose lots of time. But more importantly now, Michael Sheraton is leading Class D, and if he can stay there for the last couple of laps of this race, he will be the um, Class D race winner for the first time in his racing career. Lights go up. Second position. So 
into Charlie comes again. Wise clock and Harrison. This trio of cars has been battling through both parts of this race. Second part in the open part that counts as well. So and now back down the park straight once again towards the park corner and clock. Perhaps trying to close up on Wise here to perhaps have a go in the park corner. Couldn't get that one done though. Yeah, the South Park got to a faction. Now we're stuck behind the Sapphire Cores, we have nowhere to be able to find a way through. So it looks like Craig James is going to win in the Ford Sierra RS Cosworth. He comes over the top of the mountain, he's heading towards victory. Lobby Dunster managed to go with him, but no more than that. Dunster, in fact, setting the fastest up of the race for 141.037. Third, Tim Squad Andrews in the Rover Test. Fourth, Andrew Busby, the E30 BMW. Fifth, Paul Bellamy. Good result from him. Sixth, Stephen Premier, he's back up to pace, so top six finish for the Escort. The battle for seven for Clark. He's going to try and get the run over the top of the mountain. Couldn't do that though. So now he's going to try and find some way through around Paul Ben. We can ride on board with him. There may be a dive up on the inside for the hairpin. No, Wise defends that. Scott Andrews can go up to second and Stephen Privet here in the escort as well. He's going to challenge Dunster for third position ahead in the coppice, but it's going to be the old man Craig Jameson leads. And the probe of the test, Tim Scott Andrews there in second. Third, Dunster, the multiple time race winner in 2012. Then fourth, Stephen Privet, and then fifth, our on board camera. That's Andrew Busby then. As Dunster gets the card there, he's sideways onto the, the back straight in the, the E36 BMW M3. from the back of the grid, he's into the top six now. Great drive from him. On board we can go with Busby, he heads into the hairpin. Just behind the Ford Escort of Stephen Primmett. Primmett comes really quickly through bar and corner on this lap. So we head up across the line to complete The leader's heading through on bends towards the end of the lap. Now they head out. Mark Corner, head towards the line, and the victory goes to Jameson then.